What up, what up, what up, what is happening, good people? Welcome to this edition of Herb and Two, alongside Tucson Warner. My name is Herb Power. Every Thursday and Saturday, we are here hanging out with you, wonderful people, talking about issues that currently impact the black community. We talk about how those issues impact us as individuals and also how they impact us as a collective. And along with your help, we talk through these issues in hopes of finding the optimum solutions for how we can overcome said issues. Again, overcome them individually, but perhaps more importantly, overcome them as a collective. Thank y'all so very, very much for choosing to be a part of this conversation. As always, your input is valued. It is certainly, certainly appreciated. Anything you want to add to the conversation, feel free to do so. We will read through as many of your comments as possible while we go through the show. We would kindly request that you please take a quick second to share the broadcast, share on your personal page, share with your personal network, share with anyone that you think would add value to or find value in this particular conversation. Again, this is Herb and Two. It's intellectual thuggery at its absolute finest. My name is Herb. His name is Two. Two. What's happening, good brother? I was fine until you started no, grabbing no. that prop mic and moving like it was really working. You are sick. That was amazing. I thought we were just going to play it out, but you really played it out. You're the wildest nigga. you like, I watch know. me work. I see you, bro. Yes. You're a professional, one. bro. You're a fucking professional. It's always one, bro. You're a fucking professional for real. You, hey, that mic doesn't work because I like it. I like how you did that. That was dope, bro. That was dope. Salute, man. I salute you, man. You cold. So man. you a wild boy. You cold. I don't like him at all. I just don't like him. You cold, cuz. That's so crazy. But other than that, I'm blessed and highly favored. That's so crazy. It be your own people every time. Every man. time. Every time. Every time. It's all defense. It's, I mean, it's not like it's a quarter. <laughs> Coming from the Wait a minute, you got yours over there too, don't you? Start no shit. This is not a problem. Oh, you talking. pretend niggas. <laughs> you hear that? She under the same act trying to smoke me. Right. Ain't no call your shit like either. That hell My crazy. name is her. His name is too. <laughs> that I was like, what the fuck is he doing? I thought he was going to sit back and be cool, but when you grab that bitch, I got nervous. Was, <laughs> why does this nigga work? I was really just messing with Ron because he That's was like, hilarious. he was like, it's fine, just don't use it for the intro. I'm like, oh, don't use it for the intro? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. We will not use it for the intro. Oh fuck it. Fuck y'all. My well since you did it, let's you know, we're in the new oh. digs for the temporary digs. We're live from the couch. We're live from the couch. We, we can't put our feet up on the ornament or the table. We this is an uncomfortable new setting. We're gonna bring a foot table next time. <laughs> We gotta make a There's rules in this setting. I don't like are, it. Jesus Christ. Can't smoke. Can't put your feet up. This is crazy. Oh, I don't really smoke. P.I. passed the dope. <laughs> um, where's the lick? Didn't you say you was giving me wine? You totally forgot. Wine? It's too late now. That is crazy. This um, is crazy. Man. This is like being in my mama's house. <laughs> Mama jerk. <laughs> Mama jerk. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, though. I'm liking it. Um, Labor Day weekend just passed. Um, why is Labor Day weekend such a big deal? Like, like let's like just contextually. I don't. I know it's always been a thing. You do the barbecues, you get together, and I don't know. Is it, is it just that it signifies the end of summer? Signifies the start of school? Like, what about Labor Day makes it a to do? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's really a work off. a job like that, so I, it never mattered to me like that. You it's, know what I mean? it's just a long weekend. But so it's like President's Day or whatever, <laughs> but it don't seem like that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? I think it signals like the end of summer and yeah. the start of like fall and like all these upcoming holidays. Yeah. We know Halloween going to come next, then we know yeah. Christmas. It kind of like triggers off. Hey, put your fake mic closer to you so it looks like it works. All right, let's try Okay. That. If we're going to have it up there, we at least got to use it as the prop that it is. You know what I mean? I mean, why do, why do people got to know what we got going on? I mean, it looks good. I look, I'm looking at it through the screen. It's dope. Why they got to know? I'm just saying, but if we're going to fake it, let's fake it right. You know what I'm saying? The audience needs to no, know I fuck with things. it. I fuck with it. I'm just saying. Like, it. You know why? We tell the raw you truth. You know why? They don't need to know because the Because he truth. doesn't have one. That's what it is. Right? I feel left out. If, if we, I need my mic to move around with if, this shit. If we had George like we had it set up, you would you would be going for it. Actually, I like the freedom of not having to touch shit, right? I told you a while ago, I was watching somebody podcast. And they were like, yeah, it's like one of those cheap podcasts with the handheld mics. And from that point on, I was offended by having handheld mics. <laughs> That's some bullshit. I'm an either or kind of guy. Like I'm either or holding the mic. Or having this stand set up as it is so perfectly, either way, <laughs> works. You know what I'm saying? I feel it. My ego was just affected by the nigga saying it was some poor shit. I was like, oh no, we we in the game. We can't look like we, you know, poor. My ego is unaffectable. No, mine isn't. 
I'm a, I'm a Leo. It, it, you know, you my could, ego is unaffectable. You could um, damper my ego quick. Y- y'all seen them calendars that be like, uh, it, it tell you like it's talking about like how fast a year go. So like it'd be New Year, it'd be, it'd be like February or something like that. Mm-hmm. And like man, New Year's just passed, and you know now it's it's it's, it's uh, Valentine's Day, and soon it'll be. Well, I don't even know what happens in March, but anyway, basically they said the year be over as soon as it started. I can't I forget how it went, but it was kind of cool. Sorry, I said that for no reason. <laughs> I just thought about some shit, but it's for relationship Friday, so I guess we'll talk about that in another hour too. But you got hey, <laughs> this is what I mean. Stop <laughs> producing live on the show, man. I'm just saying. It just came to me when you said the shit you o- said. Only the, it's only, a good topic though. I'm, I'm holding it though because we're recording. Only the patrons get to be behind the scenes like that, man. Only the official dirtbags get to be behind the scenes like that. You stop doing that. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. To all the rest of you guys, this. But shout out to the real. new digs, OG. I'm. Yeah, like Overwhelmed. Like I'm impressed. Cameras. It's like 175 cameras in this motherfucker. It looks good. It's well lit. No. It's uncomfortable, but it looks great. It's very comfortable. No, I can't put my feet up. Some I love putting my be, feet up. It's going to be more comfortable. I got new socks just to put my feet up. Those but you all like socks? a stool for They brand feet? new. They white, white. That socks huff. Who does that? Well, I do. I do white socks. I, I do. White socks super hard. I have a multitude of socks, though. Nah, even with like, even with like, like, even with like, even with like Air Ones, I wear black socks. Yeah, you're a degenerate. Or no socks. Uh, d- a more degenerate move, but uh, you, you know, that's okay. That's air sock. Ones is huff to me, though. I don't, I hate Air Force Ones at this point in life. Really? You always hate them? No, no, I used to rock them. I used to like them. I hate mm. them now. Really? I hate them. They're not, most, they're not very comfortable. They're and, heavy and they as don't shit. last long. I bought a pair, well, and it, it had been a minute since I bought a pair. And I put them bitches on. It was like walking around with bricks on my feet. Yeah, I'm much more of an Air Max guy at this point in my life. I used to be like a two, three at a time Air One dude. You know what I'm saying? That's back when they were 75 even. You know what I'm saying? You're going to throw yeah. 75 even. Buck 50, two pair, we out. You know what I'm saying? Get you a couple five for 20s, white tees. You fresh for like two weeks. Bust. <laughs> I remember you could get F- one. You could only get them in one store in the whole city of Chicago. Really? Oh, on 63rd and Hostel was the only place you could buy them. Mm-hmm. Well, what couldn't you get on 63rd and Hostel? I mean, I bought my first girlfriend jewelry from 63rd and Hostel. You didn't like her at all, did you? I was like nine, nigga. <laughs> you always been a trick. Right? It just keeps going with you. Now you're tricking on jewelry. Dude. Actually, I was younger than that because she moved when we was in, like second grade, so I had to be like. Eight or something, seven or something. <laughs> in that vein, I, I see the little clip or, or Instagram. It was funny to me, and it was like, I have a problem. I suffer from being a trick. <laughs> it started when I was like nine. He starts the conversation just like you started. He's like, you know, I was in school and I bought a Capri Sun, and now it's purses and car notes and whatever they might need. You know what I mean? As long as they're willing to give I, me what they're willing to give me, I think I bought it's a, a great ring negotiation. Um, I don't think I ever bought a woman nothing until. Shit, my wife. No, it wasn't my wife. I thought you said your life. I was about to say. No, I said my wife, but then it wasn't my wife. It was probably the, the, the one real relationship before my wife. Yeah. So when I was in um, eighth grade, that's the first time. I was going to talk about when he was in high school getting purses. And white <laughs> and, and yeah, perfume. Yeah, 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 across the street. No, purses and perfume. My, I remember that my, story. My, <laughs> my <laughs> of you was like trying to skirt past the topic, but my eighth grade boyfriend. Uh-huh. Um, bought me. He used to buy me a lot of stuff. Now that I think about it, he gave me forty dollars for my birthday. Oh, he was a baller. He bought me. The box wasn't even that much back then. He bought me. He was overpaying. <laughs> Carlos Santana. Um, he fed twenty twenty three prices in twenty ten. He was a natural. Right, that's why I was saying. <laughs> natural trick. Where you at today? He's a, Two thousand. Mr. Smith. 40. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Mr. Smith, you, yeah. you called your boyfriend Mr. Smith? No, that's his name. I was trying to say his name without saying his name. <laughs> oh, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> he bought 40 bucks get the Mr. Tag? Let's go. Wait, 40 bought, does get you the Mr. Tag. Trust and believe that. He bought you, me the Carlos. Sorry, whatever you want to get called. <laughs> Carlos Santana CD. He bought me. Wait, Lisa stop it, stop it. You're in eighth grade and you get Carlos Santana? He bought me. He, you've been this person all your life. What's wrong with you? <gasps> Who gets Carlos Santana CDs in eighth grade? The fuck yeah, is that about? I love, what kind of music takes that? I there? love that music. Maria, Maria. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you know another song other than Playback yeah, Carlos Santana? And, um, yeah, I know that. I think you got the song. single. He bought you the single. You didn't no, even have that Love ain't good enough. Aim gray, you listen to that. <laughs> yeah, you cool. are degenerate. That's wow. bad. Yeah. So Mr. Smith. So you know how like Joe Budden is like your favorite rapper? Me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. For real. I like him. He can rap. Um 
I was watching the old clip. You know, he tried to hop in like a battle rap competition or something, like that slaughterhouse competition or whatever they was doing for like I don't know, hundred k or a million dollars, whatever. whatever Against it was. uh, and he, the he battled boy. Hollow the Don. Hollow, yeah. Hollow chewed him up. Joe. I saw a clip. I had forgot about it really, but I saw a clip again, and Hollow was like, uh, he was like, "Boy, you too, bitch." Flow a tree. He said, "I walk up on him." <laughs> No, nah, put down that jagged edge. I got 112. I want Joe to see. I was like, oh my God. He's... Hollow was nice. Hollow just oh, made damn. a comeback, too. He just, yeah, Hollow, Hollow was a crackhead for a little while. He was doing heroin yeah, or something right. like that. Nah, Hollow was doing, <laughs> Hollow was simple. He got too deep in the lane and all that. He That's just, heroin. He started slow. That's true. But he was just slow motion. But he just he just had a new battle this week. And I ain't even no super battle fan, but I like Hollow. Yeah, you know I do too. Mean? Speaking of got too deep into the lane, I have a question. I know we were saying move on, but I actually have a question. No, you were saying move on. <laughs> right. You were saying move on. Yeah, I was saying move on. I have a question. Um, so that guy that's They're the in Momagers, the news, by the way. P I E R <laughs> collectively known as the Momagers. <laughs> the guy um, that's with YSL and Young Thug and all of them. Gunner. The one who's acting crazy at the trial. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. the funniest shit in the world. But. <laughs> but they said that that's he had that shit down though this, this part when he was doing this part that's exactly how they do it I don't know how so you don't think that he <laughs> like studied that I'm shit I'm not doing that so you don't think <laughs> that that you, you, don't, wait. you are alone with that no, it's true. Yeah. the arm movement when he did it like that yeah. like, it, it was like nope. perfect nope but wait but wait do that's you all think Tucson Warner that is not her I'll never no, no, get no. to do from YSL it but was do, not but me but do you all think that's real or do you think that he a lot of people no. are saying that you that know, comes from do you, do you know any other person that Tua is referring to that's been caught up in a Rico? Do you think you can move keys and shoot niggas with his uncontrollable Yeah, you'd have to be doing this but all day said, long. You know what I mean? He in back room drug you, deals just oh, talking right. about somebody with a bench shot him. Bro. But they said when you withdraw, when you go through withdrawal from like drugs and stuff like that. Ooh. <laughs> so y'all think he's faking? I'm about to pass yeah. out. That's yeah. funny. So y'all think he's faking? Yeah. Yes. We've all seen, we've all seen <laughs> plus go through withdrawal. They don't just do that all day. Like, <laughs> I was a shorty. So I've said, I've said many times on the show that I was, I was a shorty. I said, <laughs> Rap the bus with my mama. <laughs> Rap the bus with her rocks back and forth. One of the rocks just had this one dude on it who would get on the bus like damn near every day. And he would sit in the same seat, chew his gum and just. Yeah, they always rock, bro. For like an okay. hour, Joe. They always rock. Okay. It's, yeah. But no, you couldn't. You, <laughs> but if I was facing that time, I'd be in there shaking and rocking oh, like a motherfucker. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope it works. I'd be the shit on myself. I did everything you could do. <laughs> the judge didn't seem to be buying it. But yeah, he wasn't with it at all. Out of shit right there in the courtroom. Right there. Like, <laughs> 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 fuck it. <laughs> so, two things. One, on training day, this tell a story about the dude. He go meet the, he go meet the three white dudes to, to give them the permission to get the warrant or whatever. Anyway. He, uh, the dude, like, man, he was like, this judge, and, uh, this like, oh, yeah, I know that judge, she's a smart lady, he like, yeah, smart, right, he like, what happened, he was like, so this dude, I've been chasing him for all this time, I finally catch him, he get up there in front of the judge, he about to get to, get his sentencing, right, he said, before this, before the hearing, he had got a hold of some extra chunky jiffy, right, <laughs> <laughs> packed this crack full of it, right, so now he's standing in front of the judge. Look her straight in the face. Put his hands in his pants. Pull out all this extra chunky and shit. And eat it. And look at the clean, staring the judge in the face. Judge say, oh, man, this man is not a criminal. He's crazy. <laughs> Send him to the psych ward for like 18 months. I'm with it. Out. I'm, not, I'm with it. I do say, hey, extreme situations call for extreme <laughs> you, measures. You, you got to respond. Do. Even if it wasn't Jiffy, it would have been a good idea. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> hey. Whatever. <laughs> Hey, on that note, though, on that Labor Day note, Frank can, call, can crawl through 500 <laughs> yards worth. This is something I did want to discuss with y'all, man. I went to the African Fest this weekend because yeah. every Labor Day, the African Fest goes down in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, salute to Patrick, the uh, who runs the African Fest. Salute to everybody involved in the African Fest. I'm a baby. I'm a child of the African Fest. Mm-hmm. Like I've been going there all my life. Mm-hmm. My children was kind of raised in the African Fest. Uh, they had uh, Dead Prez perform this week. Buckshot Shorty perform. Uh, for the old, the elders, they had cameo the last evening on the hip hop night, bro. It might have been sixty people in the entire Dang. festival. Dang. Friday, which was a new thing this year, was free for the public. Mm-hmm. No one showed up. I live across the street from the festival. All right. The only time I saw any amount of people was cameo, and there was the old heads, and even that was like a low number. Wow. And I was thinking about it from the standpoint of I had the Bud Billiken experience this year, too. Mm-hmm. Like, that's tradition in my family. Right. 
right? And I'm, and I'm watching the low end change from being black metropolis, right, right to being some kind of amalgamation of something Swirl. different. You know what I mean? Right. Like the so, Bud Billiken didn't have the people. It wasn't like packed. Yeah. I had this experience walking down King Drive where I'm looking at Hispanic workers working on houses, looking at us gyrating the street, kind of laughing and joking like it was comical. Yeah. Right. White folks kind of had this disgust, look like, all right, hurry up, niggas, get on. Right. And then the black bourgeois that's moved in, they kind of have the same look as white folks. Right. And I just thought about it from a cultural standpoint, like, we're losing our anchoring in the city, and like, what do we do about that? Like, is there is it is it important that we maintain that, or yeah, I, I, can I, we maintain that? Or? I think that it's it's more uh, of of a result than. Like I think you're putting the, the the cart in front of the horse. I think that it's really because we've lost our connectivity and our value of those things that has allowed it to get to that space. So I don't know this like oh we just got we're not fighting hard enough for it. We don't give a fuck. And we stop giving a fuck before the numbers fail. You know what I'm saying? If we if we if we still value Bud Billiken like everybody used to, people used to be charged about Bud Billiken. Or if you knew some of the dance groups and they got to be in the Bud Billiken, that was a big thing. And everybody helped them raise money and get new uniforms. Or if you was you know uh, South Shore Drill Team or Jesse White Tumbling Team, like that was always a big deal. And at some point, we like oh, Jesse White Tumbling Team eyes. You know what I'm saying? When that used to be still impressed. I'm still very impressed too, but that's because. <laughs> I've always been anchored into that. I still see it as, as valuable. You know what I'm saying? I know it's choice that's on it now. And it's like, man. But I don't think that as a collective black Chicago, that still holds the merit that it once did. It, it obviously doesn't. Right? right. But I guess my question is, like, can we get that back? Is there, it, Should we try to get it back? Should we mm-hmm. try to create something new? Or is it just like, fuck that shit? It's a great question, too. I, I definitely don't want to say fuck it because I don't, I don't feel like that. But I also don't know that I feel very confident in our collective ability to get it back to certainly not to that level, um, because, like I said, at some point it stop, it ceases to matter to us. And then as other people come in, they have no connectivity to it, nor any desire for it. And shit, the stuff that bothers me about that. Right. Like, so I see it from a different lens most times. Mm-hmm. Right. Like. I've leveraged my business acumen to let to walk through all of those events mm-hmm. and get more business. Right. Mm-hmm. I've leveraged my communal acumen to walk through all them situations and get more opportunities for my children or for right. my friends or even for myself. Right. Right. So I went to the again the African Fest this year, end of the fest, Keisha's birthday. Keisha had a birthday cake, hung Shout out. Salute to Keisha. Yeah, salute to Keisha. Happy birthday, Keisha. Uh, but think about that, right? My daughter Keisha, my relationship with Keisha, my daughter works for Keisha, my daughter then damn near traveled the world on the back Shout of the Keisha's girls like program. Me project. Right. And all those kind of things are communal in the sense that it all grows sure. out of the same thing. Sure. I had an opportunity with, the, the dude who used to run the actual parade for the Bud Billiken was called the Colonel. Mm-hmm. He gave me an opportunity to put on a concert at the end of the Bud Billiken when, you know, they used to have like big concerts in the mm-hmm. park after the parade finished. Mm-hmm. He gave me like $10,000 and didn't even do the concert. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like opportunities flow out of these things. For sure. And because we're not connected to them, like, you know, though if we've been honest, right? The people who run the festival, the people who engage in the African festival, the people who run the Bud Billiken, mm-hmm. who engage in the mm-hmm. Bud Billiken mm-hmm. are really the black business elites of Chicago. No, for real. So if we're not engaging them, what are we doing? Uh I think that we just view it kind of, yeah. That's the problem with what our topic for today is. That's why. We are where we are because no one is anchored into those um, community events. Like, we grew up in the Bud Billiken Parade. I know right. I did. We had stuff to do. Right. These kids are grown ahead of their time these days, so mm-hmm. they don't want to do those things because it's corny, it's cheesy, whatever the case may be. It's not getting them any money. Yeah. And kids want money yeah. because they want to become or be what they, you see know, what they see media. on social media. Now, that's crazy, and it and it and it, it leads it leads them to to terrible decision making. And first, mm-hmm. before that, it's just it's that devaluing again, devalue for self, and then definitely devalue for everybody else around me. And then that's what would allow 14, 15 year olds to think that Bud Billiken is lame, but putting switches on guns and having 30 shot clips is cool. You know what I'm saying? It's like nah, so like like that's. That's not cool. That's not to say we was super so different. Like we, I thought stuff we, I thought stuff was cool too. But I thought like school fights was cool. Like when I was in Bryn Mawr, we had school fight, a big school fight with Madison up at South Shore. 
we used to do this thing called the South Shore Games where all the grammar schools would come in and it was like a little Olympics for the South Shore Grammar Schools. And we played a bunch of different sports, track, baseball, basketball, whatever. We would do it up at South Shore Park. Um, anyway, one year we had a big stupid fight with Madison. It was like this legendary thing. Everybody thought it was super cool because it was crazy. It was getting hit with bats and all that. But that was one thing. It wasn't like shoot all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I think that now... Um, because the, the the there's that lack of value for other things that we were anchored into, it ain't nothing for these shorties to just merge. So it. in a world where there's a lack of respect, the way I see it at least, is there's a lack of respect for process. Sure, exactly. Right? So I grew up in a house that exactly. was <clears throat> heavily inundated in like the boxing world. My father was a big fight fan, and turned and made my sister a big fight fan, me mm-hmm. a big fight fan. Yeah. Like I'm talking about NBC, ABC fights. That's yeah. how long ago that shit yeah, was, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking about that, like today you could be a YouTuber and fight Floyd Mayweather. Right, right. Right, when you have motherfuckers who train all their lives. 20 years to, to hopefully get a fight like get that. that shot. Right. You know what I mean? But you could bypass all that shit just by being it's a different time, popular man. on the internet. Popular, yeah. Right, so we talked a couple weeks ago about the little boy that did the Twitch thing who had mm-hmm. the whole New York City shut down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't know who dude was. So I got to asking my son about like, who's this dude? Like what? Cause they got power. We can't deny the power of being able to pull that many people yeah. to actually activate. That's, that's they move. That's why they call influencers. Yeah, they did. Influencers is one thing, right? It's a lot of people with a bunch of influence in that web space, mm-hmm. but getting tangible results, they can't do. You might have X amount of millions of followers, but you put a t-shirt up, you can't sell 10 of them bitches. Mm-hmm. My yeah, man got mean. people to legitimately come out their houses and meet him in the middle of wherever they was, Times Square, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. So I was asking my son, like, what do dude do? Like, how has dude got this kind of power? How did he get this level of popularity? Right. You know what I'm saying? And this is the legit response. He said, man, he used to do gaming on Twitch, and the dude is from New York. So he lived in a rat-infested apartment. So you could see the rats running behind him on the screen. That's legitimately where his popularity came from, my son said. Hey. I didn't know that. That's insane, bro. It don't matter where it come from, right? Even if it's from rats running around in the background of your gaming experience, it don't matter. And so if that's where I got to get it from, or if I got to get it from, you know, twerking and shaking ass, or if I got to get it from shooting, I'm going to get it from wherever because there is no other value. And so I saw a clip of this teacher, a young, relatively young black woman teacher. And her way to call her class to attention is to yell out, you know, while they making their noise and chattering or whatever, she, she yells out, uh, if you see me and you trying to see what's up, and they all go, ski I didn't know what that was. You said ski <laughs> It's a call and response. And they instantly all ski and be silent. I don't necessarily have a problem with it because I always talk about meeting people where they are. But the fact that this is where they are is kind of wild, right? Like I push back on that meme people. I know you are. do, but I, I'm just saying, like, it, it's kind of wild that that these young kids are at the booty, pink, pussy hole, br- whatever the fuck it is. That's that's where they at. You know what I'm saying? But that's the same um, or a similar conversation, I guess. I don't remember uh, where it was, but. It was a conversation about Trump. Now, now that he has a mug shot, mm-hmm. he's going to. Oh yeah. yeah. You know he made seven million dollars off that goddamn T-shirt in two days. Good. Yeah, but now that he's a uh, convicted criminal, you oh, know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Now a, a whole different crowd of people can now relate to him and will become more like invested in him. You got to like indicted. dangerous, viol- you know, danger, violence, um, crime. Look at how you know what I mean. Americans, we to... we cling to that. Look at how he's going to be able to relate to all mm-hmm. his insurrectionists from January 6th. Right? Yeah. They locked us all up. We together. They yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. They finna like he finna he finna ride that right back to the oval. Yeah. Like, but that's that's what we own. You can ride any of that kind of shit back to the oval. Like the top of the Yeah, like so you talk about like somebody like like Vaughn or 051 Melly. Right, mm. they rode. I will murk you to the top of their universe. You know what I'm saying? And when shorty see that, they're going to duplicate it. How much I, value does relatability have, though? Right. So we, I know we're having a conversation around violence too, and it's yeah. right. 
Common is my favorite rapper, probably of all time. Mm-hmm. Now, I think not to minimize Common's actual uh, uh, rapper value. Sure. But part of why Common is probably my favorite rapper of all time is the nigga from 87th Street. Mm-hmm. Like his experiences, his lyrics, this is experiences that I had. Sure. You know what I mean? He talks about shit that I can relate to. He came up in the time where I was coming up. You sure. know what I mean? So <clears throat> at the time, I just was like, I'm a Common fan. Mm-hmm. As I look back, it's probably because it was relatable to me. Mm-hmm. This is identifiable to me. Right. You know what I mean? But also, I can look at that. I can, I can appreciate a Joe Budden, or I can appreciate a KRS One. I can appreciate, I tell you all the time, I learned a lot about black history, a lot about right. life through, through hip hop. Right. You know what I mean? So a lot of that shit challenged me to go above and beyond what was recognizable. Right? I think today we have that, like, it irritates the fuck out of me when my kids tell me, Daddy, you don't get it. It's my generation. Mm-hmm. Right? Because there ain't nothing new in your generation. It might be hyper. It's not new. Right. For sure. Right? And when you do that, you minimize those who came before you. Hence, you're going to bump your head. A wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Right. A dummy makes the mistakes himself over and over again. Mm-hmm. Right? But then they, there's a goddamn colloquial term where it's like, it's my generation. Leave me the fuck alone. We are above reproach or above judgment. Yeah. Even when you say, skinny we... What, I know that's probably right. wrong how that shit is said, but <laughs> they say her I'm value... Like that, song like that, they say her value in the lexicon of music today is because she's relatable. No. So, like, I think that the relatability that you're talking about versus the relatability that these young shorties find appealing are two different things. So you're talking about the relatability of... We from the same place, and I get I, like I get you because I understand where you from type shit. I think there's extreme value in that, and that should be the the value relatability. But I think the actual value relatability is like um, them being relatable on a idea of what success looks like, and I think that's why Common isn't held in the same regards as the Jay Z's or the Fifty Cent's. He's a million times the lyricist that 50 Cent is, but he's not held in that regard, not because the relatability that you're talking about, but the relatability that they view as successful. It ain't just because King Von from O Block that makes us a lot of people from fucking Parkway Gardens. You know what I'm saying? It's because of all the other shit that they, that they deem valuable. Oh, he's a shooter and he's tough and he's been in the county in and out of the woo, out the bam. It's like, why, why is that valuable and why does that make it why is that more relatable to you, even if that's not your reality? So I don't, I don't know. That's that's why I pose it the way I pose yeah, yeah. it. Like, common is dope. I'm not minimizing that. Right. But I say he's my favorite. Right. And I think that's because he was from 87th Street. I, I the reason I leverage that is because I heard people talking about the Ski Wee girl, mm-hmm. and they was like, she had some kind of interview when she got two jail calls in the interview. Right. And they was like, man, she the genuine article. Like, she's like us. Yeah, again, though, value. I don't even think it's about the success. It's like, you familiar. It's value in that kind of shit. And I'm talking about she's valued by people who don't got no jail calls. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the stuff that we value. That makes it, that makes it a more real thing. We aspire downward is what I'm kind of getting to. I'm a great, yeah, I'm, I'm. Right, like, I grew up with a daddy. Hip hop was kind of made on O's to your mama and fuck my daddy. For a while, I think I found myself like, man, why I got a daddy? <laughs> yeah, cause we like you that, know what I mean. Then was then was soft niggas. Boy, you live with your daddy. Your daddy live with you. Like we yeah. and on some ignorant shit. That's that's a dumb ass thing to think. Yeah. But it's like, boy, your daddy still you still live with you type shit. Like so again, generational, 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 and this so dilapidation is. It's civic engagement, it's loss of opportunity and equity in the communities, all that shit is happening, right? Mm-hmm. So, again, me, my saying, man, why well, I got a daddy? Now the jail call is the common thing because this is the state of our community. But you know what? I, I, I found myself, um, and I'll talk to my friends about this, like talking, you know how successful people all come from, or it seems all successful people come from like a certain struggle, right? Mm-hmm. So to the you grew up with your daddy or you know your daddy type of thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like we question if we've been through enough sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, am I going to be successful if my story is not as bad as mm-hmm. the next story, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, like, myself personally, 
my story was bad mm -hmm. up until yeah. a certain point in life. You know yeah. what I mean? But then when you hear what everybody else goes through, it's like well, I need, I need some more trial validates and tribulation. you or something like that. Yeah. 50 ain't 50 if you don't get shot nine times. That's what I'm saying. That's that is fucked up and stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I feel like that's just kind of I, I can't speak for other races, but like for black people, that's just what we've been taught our lives should be. But my argument is the exact replica of the argument for hip hop. We yeah. hyper idealize our traumas. Hyper idealize our traumas. I, don't, I told y'all openly, it's winters and shit, we ain't had heat. I live right. with my grandmama, my grandfather, right. several different yeah. winters, right. Right? Yeah. right? But this is so common in our community. Right. So I said in this way, I wasn't having the experience that nobody else in my community wasn't having. So right. it's very normalized, right. right? But even in that, it wasn't even seen as a negative. There was a lot of love in the ghetto in yeah. my community. I, I, them are still some of my best friends. Dang, no doubt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mindset. Right mindset. So that you mentioned fifty, or you even or Lil Wayne, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Fifty was a victim of a crime. He sells himself not as a victim though. Right. He sells himself as a as gangster. the perpetrator. Right. You not. It's a lie. It's hyper. It, 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 it idealized reality. That ain't your reality. I don't know his reality, but the, yeah. the story that we do know, it doesn't equate to the character you've created. Mm -hmm. Lil Wayne has created a character all throughout his career, but Lil Wayne was. Riding around with bourbon, and then by his time he was like eleven or ten years old, he right. couldn't even curse. Right. They wouldn't let the boy curse. Right. So you ain't had no significant experience in nobody's streets. It's so crazy how often he talks about getting shot, like he didn't shoot himself. You shot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I started selling rocks right after I got shot. I had to hold my weight down. Pussy niggas stand up or lay. Well, you even, shot yourself. What are yeah, you talking all, about? All of these stories, right? You, you, if, if you listen to hip hop, you think every one of them dudes was like the kingpin in the streets. Yeah. Right, and that's because just, that's what we value, and that's what that's what then allows them to go on the sale. But I think that's also what adds to flipping the trauma into this kind of numbing of the reality, right? Like we don't like we look at these things like that's that's traumatic, and but then by the time you like grow up in a city like Chicago, once you reach, once you become of age, it's like mm, you don't even view it as necessarily trauma. It's like oh, that's just that's par for the course, and yeah, I heard them shots and like turn the TV back up. You know what I'm saying? What I'm yeah. saying is this shit ain't even real though. I'm saying it's hyper idealized. It's mm -hmm. made up in your fucking mind. Right? No. Hear what I'm saying. All right. Right now, I'm not saying it's, I'm not painting with a broad brush. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Right? But the average dude in O Block is not King Von. He's right. not having King Von's experience. No. Right? How many bills is in O Block? 10, 12, something like that? How many niggas is in O Block, even in the rap noticeability nationwide, 10, 12? Right. You know what I mean? Let's say one person per building. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So the average person in O Block is going to school, going to work in somebody's mail room, right. or trying to better himself. Right. Right? To be King Von, you got to seek out that life. Mm -hmm. It don't just come to you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You got to seek out going to find the victim, going mm -hmm. to be involved. You got to seek out that shit. I was telling somebody the other day. Like Chicago culturally has always been interesting to me in a sense like you could like segment the size of town sure. for the kind of crimes that get committed. Right? The further south you go, it used to be more murderous. You go to the east side, you would get robbed. You go to the low end, it was hustlers. Mm -hmm. That was the culture. Projects was on the low end. Mm -hmm. You just didn't go. Right? Motherfuckers was afraid of projects, but the murderers came from homes. Mm -hmm. The niggas in the projects would call the hundreds like we got a problem down here. Mm -hmm. Right? Because of the dense nature of the projects, you couldn't move like that because you see them niggas every day. So if you was folks from the hundreds, you can get away with shooting a motherfucker down on 51st Street going back to the hundreds. Mm -hmm. That's where the murderers lived there. East side, they robbed the shit out of people. Mm -hmm. That was the culture over mm -hmm. there. Get money in them buildings. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is there's a hyper idealized version of what's really going on. You ain't really having that experience. You're not really entrenched in such and such experience. To the hundreds point. If I wasn't involved in bullshit, and this ain't the crime capital of the city in the sense of it ain't the robbery capital. Sure. It ain't the if you ain't did shit over here, the murderers ain't looking to murder you. Sure. But but to the to the point about like King Von and having to like make a to to actively seek that out. I think that in our in our communities, in our environment, strategically so, it's it's an easier decision to make. Oh, you ain't got to go far. You can find right. it. Every day I walk from school from 69th to 73rd, I could have chosen to do whatever I wanted yeah. to. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I had to go way out of my way. 
I'm gonna stop on the corner and chop it up with you niggas. And if I choose to stand here for two hours with you niggas, then I can. But I'm just gonna say what's up, shoot the shit, and keep it pushing. Or I'm gonna get out of school, shoot the shit, go to football practice. And then on a, you know, on Friday night, Saturday night, I might be, you know, fucking around with y'all on some, you know what I'm saying, on some part-time shit. But like, it wasn't, it wasn't far away. You know what I'm saying? So uh, around this conversation of, of, of violence and you know where we come from and, and what that looks like in our in our neighborhood, when when does it cease to be trauma or not even cease to be trauma? When do we cease to recognize it like that and, and start to become so numb to it that it just becomes this acceptable part of our everyday lives? Where you talk you've talked about it several times of you know knowing forty plus people that have died from gunfire. You know what I'm saying? And we've all given you know our, our, our personal accounts of things that are going on. You've been dealing with it way too close for the past couple of months. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's at, it, at some point it becomes this thing like, oh, you hear about it, it's like, oh, damn. He's like, oh, you know, so and so died. He's like, oh, damn, that's fucked up. What was we just talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and you just kind of go through it until it starts to hit close to home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and Sue said that it's over sensationalized, but it's really not, right? Mm -hmm. We are. I think it's really that close. It's just that close, and we're reacting to it. Even when I'm, you know, sleep at night, and then, you know, you hear some gunshots, mm -hmm. you might lift up a little bit. And you look like and right, then right you now. just go back. You watch a TV show. You just do kind of like whatever's whatever you've been doing or whatnot. There are neighborhoods. Yeah. In fact, most neighborhoods in this country, like the overwhelming majority of neighborhoods in this country, if that were to happen, <coughs> it would shut down that neighborhood. Everybody would be like, what's going on? Everybody would come outside. Cops would flood that that, that neighborhood. Us yeah. is like, you know gunshots? Yeah, I think so. You'd All be right. like, is it gunshots or is it fireworks? Then you just kind of like lay back. But we're literally traumatized, I feel. Or or are we not? Maybe we're not traumatized. I think we are, but I do think we normalize it in a way that I don't even know that we view it so much as trauma. As trauma. Like, I think we're numb, and I. But I think the way I was trying to have a conversation around it is like a historical perspective of how it starts. Then, if you get that construct, you can figure out how to stop it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And I think that I was kind of. I'm older than y'all. I always talk about this. I'm kind of in the middle of almost everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I'm in the middle of the generation where this shit became normalized. I right. remember when you knew the one motherfucker in the neighborhood who had a gun. Right. Yeah. Right. All of the gun violence was through this shared gun. Right. You know That's what I mean? Sure. Everybody passing shit. that 38 around. Right. You, and, and that was very rare, right? Yeah. You could still handle some shit on the block with your hands. Right? I've had, we was the yeah. last generation of motherfuckers who could fight, in yeah. my mind. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we was the last generation of motherfuckers who was fighting. We had to fight, right? You know what I mean? So, we to like look at the trajectory, yeah. again, when I say hyper-idealized, you know what I mean? Like, I can think of people who I know today that are in my same exact peer group who are chiefs in the neighborhood in regards to like gang structures and violence and all mm -hmm. that shit. I know them as Transformer and Lego playing with motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know them as a person who chose to be a part of that, whatever that energy is. Mm -hmm. You were not necessarily inundated in it. Mm -hmm. You chose it. Yeah. If in reality, because of the kind of family structure I come from, I was much more inundated in it than you were. Mm -hmm. And maybe because I had an up-close front row seat to it, it didn't have the same allure to me as it had to you. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to hyper-idealize it. It lived here. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and my father was like the beacon of hope in the family. So my uncle at the time was out here on Heron. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My cousins is out here robbing the motherfucking... Family, I love y'all, but this is our regular lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? I remember my cousin Paige is a few years older than me. I love, shout out to Paige. Shout but I remember second, I don't even know if you know this, but you know Paige. Mm -hmm. South one year in high school, they finna lock Paige up ass for 25 fucking years. For stuffing dope in a motherfucking drawers for her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I remember my daddy having to go to court for her. And, you know, yeah. this was... I'm young, young, but I'm experiencing these yeah. things. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not, I ain't got to idealize this shit. We living it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't consider myself to come from a downtrodden, fucked up family. Again, part of the numbness and the normalization of it all. This is what it is, right? But I didn't have to idealize the criminal element because I saw it up close. Yeah. Whereas I could, I could have speaking of, was thinking of specific people I know, wasn't that close to it. You know what I mean? And today they two, three gunshot victims in, 
Right. No telling how many people they didn't lay down. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they highly respected in the neighborhood as being X, Y, Z. But I know your truth. Right. You were never really that. Now, you might be that now because you you lie to yourself long enough, it becomes your truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the glorification of that. Why would that young man be interested in that energy in that way? I think there's 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 that allure to it, right? Like Jay Z, the allure of breaking the law was always too much for me to ever ignore. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think that some people just are drawn to it in that way. You know what I'm saying? I can remember being like eight nine years old and seeing my kitchen table full of guns. I'm talking like thirty or forty of them, cause uh, the nigga a neighbor was 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 fucking with my mama. And them niggas had, uh, I walk in the kitchen like, what the fuck is, like, is this? You know what I'm saying? And like, so for me, it was just like, I don't even, I don't even view y'all niggas as that serious. Like when I go outside and you niggas is on this toilet, like, I don't even view y'all like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that part of it was never that much of an allure. I will say this though, like, so one of my brothers, Diop, he's like three years old, <laughs> right? And then all his homies was like, three, four years older than him. So when I'm like 16, all my niggas is like 22, 23. And we always going out and we always in the club. We in, we not downtown. We in the hood club. We at like Vaughn's on Ashland. We had a spot called Little Mississippi. <laughs> like we in the hood hood and it was always busting. Like every time we went out. The 66. What? It was always <laughs> busting. Every time we went out, it was spicy. And we would go out 30, 40 niggas deep after we done hung out in Boot Crib and drank Tang or Black Label for three hours and then 40 niggas go outside. How we not finna get into it? You know what I'm saying? And so, and, but for a while, like, that was, that was cool to me. That was fun. You know what I'm saying? That was, mm -hmm. that was, that was, that was way that different was from, like, so I go to, I can get to high school with Young and niggas on Tough Shit and it was always hilarious to me. Like, y'all niggas can't be fucking serious. Like, this is, y'all, this not for real, right? But even still, I ain't have to, I ain't have to make that damn choice at all but there i was constantly in the bullshit well here's another way to look at it too though even if you just excavate the violence like you can remove the violence in totality mm -hmm. i think in a very capitalistic transactional environment a man is always looking for validation true right and most times he's looking for validation from women right so it's interesting to me again like i said i'm older than y'all i've seen shit a different perspective mm -hmm. you know what i mean through different channels today it is the shooter that's the respected cat mm -hmm. at certain time it was the get money nigga that was the respected cat mm -hmm. times before that it was the i work a job cat that's yeah. the respected cat mm -hmm. or, you know slip, or the so slick in, tongue nigga. so we in a shooter era slick we tongue a, pretty tony nigga. but everybody's still looking for validation too. right but again it's through the yeah. lens i tell people I to, i've told my woman this i don't give a fuck how the world views me I'm going to view me through the lens in which you view me through. That's true. You know what I mean? That's some interesting shit to think about. Mm -hmm. I could be a god to the world. If I come home, my woman think I ain't shit. Being ain't shit is going to resonate. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So it's that's the, the prevailing perspective. That's the prevailing perspective. Right. You know what I mean? And it ain't just, I, I'm, you know, God bless my mother and father. But I've talked openly about the relationship I've had with my father and my mama. Mm-hmm. My mama would shit on my daddy all the time. The world loved the shit out of my daddy. Mm -hmm. But I know internally, now that I'm old and I look back, he dealt with some issues around my mama looking at him like he wasn't shit. Mm -hmm. And that was a reflection of her own insanity. Bless mm -hmm. her heart, but that's really what that was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But he internalized that shit and saw himself through that lens. One of the coldest motherfuckers I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when I look at that shit, and I'm not blaming women, I'm looking for how do we change this energy? Because it's a fucked up, even as a man, you shouldn't look for that validation. Right. Right. Should. But we all, how do you explain fish to, to right. water the fish? Right. We still stuck in this white supremacist system where everybody's, the damn goal is to demonize you. The damn goal is to make you eat a cancer, to make you eat yourself. And we all fall in line. So when we ask for a solution, how do we rise up? And I, I hear what you're saying, and we, you know, we always hear in the women, you know, and the women mm -hmm. can change and the women can change, and I get it. But I don't think that that 
view that you have or that understanding that you have that you're going to value yourself based on the, the lens that your wife sees you through. I'm sure I just butchered what you just said. But I don't know that the, 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 the individuals that, at least from my point of view, are causing the problem, causing this chaos, running around traumatizing Chicagoans, black people, us people in the hood or whatever, what have you. It's a layered um, situation. I don't think I they have that same respect for women, for relationships. They're doing this for clout. You know what I mean? They and have the respect. Now pull back the lens of what clout gets that's, you. That's the layers to it, right? Yeah. So I, I, I feel what you're saying yeah. on that on that surface part of it, yeah. right? They're not, they're not initially doing this about women, right? They initially just want to, how do I become that nigga in my neighborhood? Now, what... Why do I want to be that nigga? Yeah. What What does that nigga afford me yeah. that I that I'm not currently affording? Yeah. Right. And now I got money and I got cars and I got that for what? I don't even think it's that though either, because I think mm. that it used. I feel like it used to be about money. It used to be about drugs. It used to be about turf. It used to be about women. Let me. Nah, even parenthetically, that, let me stop you though. It's yeah. never been about those things. Yeah. It's only been about one thing, always, and it's still only about one thing, and that one thing is love. It's still about love. I agree with that. Again, all, looking all to be validated. Loving me now. Okay. Again, looking to be validated. If I can be validated through the, the lens of my car, even if it's plastic, it makes me feel whole. Mm -hmm. If I can be validated through the lens of these motherfuckers is scared of me, it makes me feel whole. Yeah. And the reason why you have that whole is because you're looking for love. You're missing that somewhere. I'm not blaming Women, yeah, right? There's not just a, love from women, love from your father, love, love from existing. your grandma, love, love in just general. From, from yeah, existing, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, uh, and I'm uh, again, mm -hmm. and, and we can pull back the layers because this shit starts much earlier now, mm -hmm. right? But you, uh, somebody, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, man, these kids, this, these kids, that, these kids, this. and I said, man, in truth, all they really need is a hug. <laughs> I wanted to have a hug. Stay in a hug booth one time. <laughs> That's all they really need is a hug. Mm -hmm. Somebody that says, legit. hey, man, I care. Right? But because we inundated we in a society hug, a hug that doesn't allow the room for Free persons hugs. to care, they're reacting to that. What the, what's the African proverb? A child that's not embraced by the love, warmth of the village will burn that motherfucker down to fill it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's where we are. TV's raising, even in a healthy household, the iPad is raising a child. Right, and what's the iPad showing you? Let's just look at the Instagrams, the because this is where we are, mm -hmm. right? What's Instagram sell you? It sells you on. I'm even pushed to the to to the shit you said. They don't respect women like that. I'd argue that this homosexuality push in a lot of ways is the same thing to keep the culture going, right? Because we keep adding logs to the flame, and because we don't have any rules in our community, we keep validating all the bullshit. Right? There should be an outcry against the way we engage in homosexuality. It should be. Mm -hmm. But we can't because the public sphere says, don't you talk about that shit. Even in context, think about the character Omar. Think about how much we love the wife. Right? right? Omar was flat out homosexual, but flat out a murderer. He was he he was he was championed in this TV show. Like he was, and think the about this. The most feared character on the show. Not just the most feared either. Right? Not just the most feared. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to a few shows. Mm -hmm. Omar, what's the music show that they filmed in Chicago with the gay brother who's the singer? Oh, the Empire. 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 Uh, I'm trying to think of the, another gay black character. Because uh, I, ain't, I, ain't I don't be in tune with this. But the reason I bring up these characters specifically, right? Because they were the most uh, masculine characters on these shows. Mm -hmm. They stood by their word. Mm -hmm. they, Omar wasn't just a fuck boy. He didn't oh. just shoot random people. What's he the revered and respect? I only turn my gun on those in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I got mean? to have a code. Omar lived a, a code of honor. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Be clear about what I'm saying here, though, y'all, because mm -hmm. imaging and messaging dictates behavior, right? Omar, the gay dude, said that. The other dudes was they would shoot at his grandma on Sunday. Right. They didn't have a code. They were right. not honorable. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. The, the 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 gay character on the Empire show, the other mm -hmm. little brother, mm -hmm. who was not a gay hot boy, mm -hmm. he did not have the same code of ethics as the gay brother. He right. did not have the same character of honor as the gay brother. Right. The, the gay brother was the stand-up man. Right. Omar was the stand-up man. Right. You know what I mean? Now, back to, to the point of what we're talking about here, right? 
And you start creating a dysfunctional system like that. Yeah. Gay becomes appealing. And I'm not saying it in the sense of sex. I'm saying it in the sense of disconnecting man and woman, feminine and masculine energies. Disconnecting what is natural to us to keep us operating in this kind of amalgamation society. Mm -hmm. Right? So like he said, well, we don't really respect women like that. Right? So the very essence of men is different. Right? A woman, you being in here with us today, since you came around our podcast, is completely different. The energy's different. Mm -hmm. Just because you're here. Right? If we had some other dude sitting in that seat, the energy would be completely different. It just would be. So if I'm out here shooting motherfuckers for clout, and then I go home and I live with a motherfucker who look like me, the energy never calms. You can keep it going on and on and on. Yeah, but then if you go and lay down with somebody that is like, yeah, baby, you know, they right, find respect for that. that. It's shit. still right. just, it's still, I, I think you, you answered it earlier when you said everybody's looking for love, like, honestly. And we talk about love all the time and that that's the whole purpose. That's the, yeah. the answer. I forgot what he said. Um, um, damn, I was just watching the show Intergalactic on Netflix, mm -hmm. and it was a guy, he said something, um, love will find us all, it will hurt us all, but it's the only thing that will save us all. Mm. And That's true. Yeah, and I was like... But I think what I'm really trying to get you know, to in the, mm -hmm. the way I'm trying to explain this, though, it is exhibited differently, too, between the differences in the genders. Yeah. How I engage my daughter is very different than how I engage my son. Mm -hmm. I don't love my daughter no more or no less than I love my son, right. or vice versa. But how I engage him is very different versus how I engage her. Mm -hmm. It's that balance that makes that connectivity or that makes the balance human being, right? Without, even with me, if I'm being honest, right? right? And I've talked to you about this. Like that lack of relationship with my mother creates a certain energy with me that ain't your energy. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Herb is much more forgiving, much more open. Much, uh, I ain't all that. Because yeah. I didn't have that balance. Yeah. Yeah. It's a much more sharper, harder edge with me. Yeah. Right? Don't mean I don't love you. Yeah. You know, but now I ain't going for that bullshit. Because yeah. that's not what I was. I wasn't matriculated through that kind of a system. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas when you see a dude who had a good relationship with his mother, it's obviously different. Yeah, yeah they say um, <laughs> never date a man who doesn't have a good relationship with with their mom because there's a lot of damage and stuff like that. But you don't think about, I mean, we always talk about daddy issues and women not having relationships with the same, the same thing. Yeah, it's just a they different the same way. Like and and again, we, yeah. I, 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 at least I think I'm introspective. Yeah. Right. So I, I try to work on all those things. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, man, we also got to be, what's the word I want to use here? humble or forgiving or accepting enough to know that they was raised in the same trauma. Yeah, give grace. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I think when we when we look at solutions, right? I think we got to have that same approach, that same perspective in terms of giving grace, but I think also we got to we got to be able to draw some boundaries too, yeah. right? And so when we talk about, you know, the shit that happened in our communities or these shootings and this and that and the third and it's like all right, cool. Is that tragic? Absolutely. Am I salty as fuck that y'all killed my little cousin? Absolutely. Did I know this nigga was out here with the shit? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew that mm -hmm. before he got killed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had these conversations with him often. Right. Bro, you got to stop doing this. I should have done more to ensure that he stopped doing this. Yeah. But, like, like you, you can't have it both ways. Because then you get in a situation where it's like, all right, cool. Now he didn't get shot 15, 20 times. It's like somebody shot him 15 times. That shit wasn't no accident. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that's like somebody wanted to kill you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like and and there's a, there's a reason for that. And so then we as family like, oh, that's that's wrong. And they just out here killing anybody. No, they're not just out. They killing this nigga because this nigga's on that shit, right? And then not only do you put yourself in the position to be in danger. You put everybody else around you that loves you mm -hmm. in danger because of your shit. Or because somebody wants to react yeah. based on that, whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's, it's super fucked But it's, like you said, it's layered. Mm -hmm. Right? Why would cuz be on that shit? Right. Right? 
and he's looking for XYZ validation. 100%. And he didn't have it. Right. And, he right. Have it. and that's what we got to acknowledge, right? So even in, I just talked about I had a front row seat to all that kind of behavior, right? But I'm very, very lucky. I'm very, even in the context of my family, I'm yeah. very, very lucky, right? All of my male cousins, with the exception of one, mm -hmm. have been to the penitentiary. Right. Right. I ain't talking about the lockup. I'm talking about we going to sit down mm -hmm. for some time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, by the grace of God, my father was there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, again, love my mama in spite of, but if it was just my mama, I'd have been in the penitentiary by now. And even still, we've done dumb shit. Even even and having even had that, that shit, I just was lucky. I still just been lucky. I, I, I've done a lot of things that could have got me 10, 15, 20 years. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, absolutely. It's, 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 it is what it is. And I think we talk about solutions. We talk about a conversation of, of restructuring our values, uh, showing love in different ways. I actually like the idea of a fucking hug booth. I, I, I kind of want to look into that shit. Um, for real, I think that'd be dope. I think it'd be dope on a lot of I thought of about levels. it during COVID, though, and I was like... Yeah, Get COVID. Yeah. COVID. I, think, I, think, I think on a lot of levels, like, I, I want to see not only the results of it, but the reactions to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. that part of it initially is as big as anything else. Um, it's a deep Talk conversation that we got to keep having, man. We got to slap. Thank y'all so very much for choosing to tune in to this conversation. To E, thank y'all for, for being open and honest and, and sharing personal perspectives on shit that ain't always easy to get into. Um, I'm sure y'all all got your own stories out there as well for, for you know, having experienced these traumas and experienced them so much that you become numb to them um, and alter your reaction uh, to, to these types of events. Uh, we'll, con we'll continue to talk about it. Thank y'all for being here to talk about it today. As always, your opinions was valued. It was certainly appreciated. Please make sure you took a second hit the thumbs up make sure you like the video if you haven't been please subscribe to the page and set the alert so you get reminders when the page goes live we'll be back here soon for a relationship friday edition of herb and two for ron rilla p-i-e-4-o -P -I -E and two my name is herb y'all be good to each other peace shalom alaikum